Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is said, consider the past and you shall know the future. In light of the 10th anniversary of the TCS, it is indeed critical to review the past development of the TCS so as to plan the future to align with the vision for trilateral cooperation in the next decade. With this said, please join me in welcoming the moderator and speakers for the first session. We kindly ask Dr. Takahara Kiyo, professor of the Graduate School of Public Policy at the University of Tokyo and director of JICA Okata Sadako Research Institute for Peace and Development to moderate the session. He is joining us from online. Thank you very much. And uh, good morning to you from Tokyo, greetings. Uh, it's such a pleasure and honor for me to be moderating this uh, first session that is entitled Achievements of TCS and Future Trilateral Cooperation. Now, before I introduce the panelists, the distinguished panelists and dive into discussion, let me, uh, by way of introduction, uh, say a few words about the background and the aim of this first session. The first decade of the TCS has witnessed its growing role in promoting trilateral cooperation, as we know, with its wide engagement in 21 tripartite ministerial meetings and many, many intergovernmental uh, dialogue mechanisms and cooperative projects. So it is um, the expectation of all the stakeholders that the TCS should play a more significant role in promoting shared peace and prosperity in this region and beyond. So on this occasion of the 10th anniversary of the TCS, this session invites former senior diplomats and eminent policymakers who have witnessed, participated, and promoted the development of the trilateral cooperation to share their experiences uh, and um, to discuss the TCS's role uh, in this regard. So how can we promote the future trilateral cooperation and how uh, should we envisage the, rule, uh, the role of the TCS in this endeavor? And now I have the pleasure of um, introducing our distinguished panelists of the day. Uh, first, we have uh, Mr. Kim Sun Hwan, who is chairman of the East Asia Foundation. Now he has had a wonderful, splendid career in uh, his country's foreign service. He was ambassador to Uzbekistan, to Aus Austria, then he served as senior secretary to the president for foreign affairs and national security. Then he became minister of foreign affairs and trade of the Republic of Korea. Uh, those are just among the few of um, the wonderful uh, career that he has experienced. And second, we have Ms. Rui Matsukawa, who is a member of the House of Councillors and a parliamentary vice minister of defense at the moment. Now, uh, she also served in the, her country's foreign service for 23 years. And what is um, particularly noteworthy is the fact that she once served as Deputy Secretary General of the very Trilateral Cooperation uh, Secretariat. She retired from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in 2016. And a few months later, she was elected as member of the House of Councillors from Osaka Prefecture. Very unfortunately, uh, the parliament is in session now and her committee has called her to attend an important meeting this morning. Uh, however, uh, we have a video message from her, uh, which we'll be showing in due course. And third, uh, we have Mr. Cheng Yonghua, who is Executive Deputy President of the China-Japan Friendship Association. Now, he also had a very splendid career in his country's foreign service. Uh, he was, I believe, the first Chinese to come to Japan and attend a Japanese university after normalization of our relations in 1972. He came to Japan in the following year. Um, later, he served as ambassador to Malaysia, ambassador to the Republic of Korea, and then for nine years, nine long years, I think this is a record, he was ambassador of his country uh, to uh, Japan. So we have a wonderful panel today. I'm very much looking forward to the discussions. And first, we will listen to the presentations from the three panelists and go into discussion after that. So um, may I 
invite uh, Mr. Kim Sun Hwang to give us uh, his initial remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Takahara, for your kind introduction. Uh, uh, but, but today's, for the convenience of the meeting, I will speak in Korean today. Uh, uh, I would uh, like to begin by extending my warmest congratulations to all of you on the 10th anniversary of the establishment of TCS. And I find it a personal pleasure to be able to participate in this very meaningful seminar held in the honor of the 10th anniversary of TCS. I would like to thank Secretary General Michigami and everyone at the TCS for inviting me. In fact, I am very much pleased to see some of my old colleagues that I worked with back in my day. For example, Professor and Matsu Kawarui, the Parliamentary Vice Minister of Defense, Cheng Yonghua, Executive Deputy President of the China-Japan Friendship Association. It is a pleasure to see all of you. However, I find it unfortunate that we cannot meet in person because of the COVID-19 pandemic. I hope that the COVID-19 pandemic will be resolved soon so I can see you both in person. I became the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade in October of 2010. And until the time that I stepped down in March of 2013, I worked very tirelessly for the promotion of trilateral cooperation for Korea, China, and Japan, and I'm proud of this fact. In 2008, at the time I was Secretary to the President for Foreign Affairs, and I worked very hard to realize a separate trilateral summit that was outside of the ASEAN Plus Three framework. And I remember working with my counterparts at the time, and this was successful because it led to the first trilateral summit held after the ASEAN Plus Three framework in Fukuoka. And a, a trilateral summit was held every year until the fifth uh, trilateral summit that was held in Beijing in May of 2012. So before and until I stepped down as Minister of Foreign Affairs, I participated in all of the trilateral summits that were held during my tenure. I remember signing the... Uh, agreement for the establishment of the TCS Secretariat together with my counterparts. Uh, I remember signing the declaration on December 16, 2010, together with the Japanese ambassador to Korea, Masatoshi Muto, and the Chinese ambassador to Korea, Jiang Shin Sun. This is an unforgettable memory for me. Since the launch of TCS in 2011, it has seen continuous growth. So for that, I would like to thank Secretary General Michigami and the staff at TCS, and I would like to highly appreciate their efforts. I remember that every time I visited the offices or I told uh, you to take ownership of the work at the TCS because you are the drivers of trilateral cooperation. And I think you were faithful uh, to that commitment because I see that how the trilateral cooperation has really been upgraded to a very high level since the launch of TCS. I think that uh, trilateral cooperation is, was especially meaningful because we are living in the Northeast Asian region. And this region has not seen a lot of multilateral cooperation over the years. So I think that the uh, Korea, Japan, uh, China trilateral cooperation has been very influential over the last 10 years. There was the six party talks that was launched to deal with the North Korean nuclear issue. But historically, given the fact that geographically the three countries are very close together, we still do not have a lot of a history or experiences of trilateral cooperation. So the fact that this uh, TCS was launched, I think it was able to breathe new life into uh, trilateral cooperation. And in fact, it institutionalized trilateral cooperation. And as has been mentioned by Secretary General Michigami, there were 21 ministerial level consultations, 13 high level meetings, 19 director general level meetings, 44 working level meetings. And we've had discussions across different areas, including the economy, culture, environment, and health. So there were very close, very uh, high level and working level discussions. 
So I do believe that this trilateral cooperation secretariat has become a pillar, an established pillar in trilateral cooperation. And with this new trilateral cooperation vision that was adopted in December of 2019, I know that TCS has been working tirelessly towards that regard. And when this vision becomes realized, that this trilateral cooperation will become even more established. This has been mentioned by numerous speakers in the uh, congratulatory messages and Secretary, Secretary General Pan Ki-moon, who's seen a lot of uh, progress over the last 10 years. And that is true. However, there were some shortcomings as well, if I am to be honest. We've had high expectations going forward because the three countries take up so much of an impact in our global trade volume and geographically and culturally, we are such close neighbors. And so because of all of these different factors, trilateral cooperation is an imperative and we must have uh, cooperation among the three countries. However, there are so many challenges that we have to overcome. These include historical perspectives and ideological differences. The three countries have worked very hard to resolve these issues in the past, but unfortunately, we still do not see uh, these issues being resolved anytime soon. What I find to be very unfortunate is that when there is bilateral conflict, that sometimes it uh, tends to spill over into trilateral uh, conflicts. And in fact, I hope that the trilateral cooperation mechanism could ease or resolve bilateral conflict, but I don't think that the trilateral cooperation mechanism has done that so far. In fact, when there is bilateral conflict, this has made trilateral cooperation even harder. When the first trilateral summit separate of the ASEAN Plus 3 framework was held in Fukuoka in 2008 until 2012, the trilateral summit was held every year. But after 2013 to now, 2021, we've only had three trilateral summits. So what I'd hope is that in the future, that trilateral cooperation can be a way to ease bilateral conflict, and that trilateral cooperation will not be negatively impacted by bilateral conflict. I hope that the leaders of the three countries and the peoples of our three countries will work towards uh, that regard. I think that to that end, the most urgent task that we have to fulfill is increase the level of mutual trust and likability among the people of our three countries. I know that there are many uh, opinion poll organizations, polling organizations in all of the three countries who continuously do these awareness surveys or perception surveys. Even in Korea, there are many uh, polling organizations who issue the same kinds of surveys. The survey results are pretty much the same. If we look at the uh, results outside out of Korea over the last 10 years, we're able to see that the Korean people's likability of Japan and Korea have continued to, Japan and China have continued to go down, and the Korean public do not have a very high a favorability of the political leaders of Japan and China. And while the Korean people say that trilateral cooperation is necessary, instead of seeing the three countries as mutually complementary to one another, the Korean people tend to see Japan and China as competitors. I think that if we were to see the survey results out of China and Japan, they would be very similar to the results out of Korea. So if there is this negative uh, perception of our people toward each other, then it will be very difficult to realize a vision of trilateral cooperation. So I, I believe that the governments and the administrations of our countries have to be more committed to public diplomacy so that we can increase mutual trust and likability of each other. Maybe invest in developing and implementing programs to promote positive images of each other and try to increase familiarity. In 2018, one uh, polling organization conducted a survey, a Korea-China-Japan mutual recognition survey on 1,000 citizens in the three countries of Korea, Japan, and China. The three 
countries' peoples have favorable images of each other in certain areas, such as culture, travel, tourism, sports. In fact, Chinese and Japanese nationals have a very positive image when it comes to Korean celebrities, Korean TV dramas, Korean pop stars. And what I find to be encouraging is that the younger generation of all of our countries have a more open-minded attitude toward each other, more so uh, than the older generation. And I think that this is a very good sign uh, for trilateral cooperation in the future. There are many public diplomacy organizations in all of our countries, and I hope that they will be mindful of the results of these opinion uh, surveys so that they can work towards uh, increasing mutual understanding and likability. I mentioned that there are many challenges in promoting trilateral cooperation, but there are also many areas that can help to promote further trilateral cooperation, one of which is the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or RCEP, that was officially signed on November 15 last year. This includes the three countries and 16 countries in Asia, excluding India, which is unfortunate. However, this is the largest single economic bloc in the world, making up 13%, 30% of the global economy and trade volume. For the three countries of Korea, Japan, and China, this is a new opportunity for us to open up regional free trade, a new opportunity to facilitate economic growth. With the signing of RCEP, I hope that this would be an impetus for the trilateral FTA discussions that we're having. April 22nd was also Earth Day. For two days, uh, President Biden of the United States hosted an online climate summit, summit, and all three leaders of our countries participated in this climate summit. And all of the three leaders made a very ambitious pledges. They share the uh, mindset that we have to decrease carbon dioxide emissions, which is the uh, key source of global warming. President Biden said that he's going to double the emissions pledge made by President Obama in 2015. And all of our three countries' leaders have also reaffirmed their commitment to net zero by 2050 or 2060. For the past few years, we've seen that we must respond to climate change as soon as possible, and this has become a very important goal. The fact that all three of our political leaders have the shared goal have the shared mindset. And as the Secretary General Ban has also said, that the environment ministers have also uh, mutually agreed upon an action plan. This is going to be very encouraging because we can launch many new positive programs that the three countries can participate in in terms of environmental protection. And I think that uh, having President Biden in the charge of the U.S. administration will have positive, encouraging signs for all three countries. While President Trump was in office because of America first policy, this led to deterioration in U.S.-China relations and a trade war between the two countries. And this has uh, substantially impacted trilateral cooperation between Korea, Japan, and China. Uh, the Biden administration is going through a review of its foreign affairs policies I hope that its foreign affairs policies can be established in such a way that it could promote trilateral cooperation. For continued Korea-Japan-China trilateral cooperation, we need to have consistent governmental and private sector and local government and municipality discussions. Regardless of the political climate at the time, the three countries have to continue to identify new cooperative projects that are based on the geographical and cultural ties that we share. And especially, we need to invest in more active exchange between the younger generation of our countries. I, hope, I, I do think that this international forum celebrating the 10th anniversary of TCS is very meaningful. And it's very important that we're having discussions to identify new opportunities despite the COVID coronavirus pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought challenges to all of, you, all of us, but I do hope that this is going to provide an impetus for a further trilateral cooperation in the future. And I would like to thank once again the CCS for preparing this forum. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kim. Uh, that was very thoughtful and uh, that you provided us with a lot of food for thought, um, rich uh, ground for uh, discussions have been laid out, I think. Now, next, I would like to turn to um, Ms. Matsukawa. Uh, I would like to ask the Secretary to show the video message that she has sent to us. Thank you.
皆さんこんにちは、松川るいです。Hello everyone! よろぶん、あにわせよ、だじゃはお。セクリティジェナルミスタミチガミ and TCS members, congratulations for the 10th anniversary. I would like to express my appreciation to all the people who has been working for developing the trilateral cooperation to date. Also, Uh, Your Excellency Mr. Kim, Kim Sonfa and、uh, Ambassador Chan Yonfa, it's a great honor for me to be together with you at this session. I still remember、uh, Mr. Kim Sonfa, you were so helpful as、uh, then Foreign Minister of the host country、uh, to support a newly born TCS. Also, Ambassador Chan Yonfa, I'm very grateful for your long time contribution to sustain and enhance the Uh, friendship and stable relations between Japan and China. So, I have been longing for joining this session.、Uh, so, I feel so sorry that I cannot participate in this session in a full fledged manner due to a sudden duty at the diet session. But I hope you are understanding.、Um, Ten years ago, 2011 September, TCS was born. Then, Korean President Im Yong Bak's strong initiative was. Echoed by his counterpart in Japan and China. And I was a, a one of the founding members of the TCS as Deputy SG. So today I would like to speak as OG of TCS. The two years I served as Deputy Secretary General of TCS was the most memorable experience and exciting experience in my diplomatic life. Let me show one photo.、Uh, see, Uh, this is a photo of the opening ceremony of the TCS. You see me in kimono. And then, you know, it's Mr. Kim s o n f a n And this is my boss,、uh, Mr. Ambassador Shin Bong Kyo from Korea. And、uh, I was enlightened by him very much with his deep knowledge about the、uh, diplomacy. And、uh, this is Ms. Noni、uh, from China.、Uh, she is a great diplomat, and we are almost the same age. And we even had our Same similar age daughter, so we instantly became friends and still so. So, in short, we、uh, had a good team. But what was most, even more great, was the young member of the TCS. They are from three countries in their 20s and 30s,、uh, selected through a very highly、uh, competitive selection process. They speak excellent English, and not just that, most of them can speak two other languages. Very smart. And most importantly, they had a, a passion for、uh, three countries' trilateral cooperation. I learned a lot from them, and they gave me hope for the future of three countries. If you come over to the TCS office, you just cannot tell who is Chinese or Japanese or Korean. They just work in unity. And I'm really sure that under、uh, Secretary General Michigami, Our TCS members are even more passionately promoting trilateral cooperation. TCS members themselves are the future leaders for sustaining trilateral cooperation. My conviction that youth exchange and promotion of understanding is the most critical area for cooperation is actually stems from my own experience、uh, working together with them at the TCS. So, TCS future. I'd like to,、uh, to, to say a basic idea that is, we need a realism and dream both to promote the trilateral cooperation. Ten years ago, when I, was,、uh, uh, when I worked at the TCS, the relations among the three countries w a s not great,、um, especially for Japan. But now, ten years have passed. Unfortunately, bilateral relations among three countries. Is still not great or rather worse. Plus, it is not just bilateral relations. We are now in a historical transition facing US China strategic competition. And COVID 19 poses huge challenge to the humankind. So, in short, it's not a favorable environment for the TCS to pursue its mission. But because of that, The role of the TCS has become even all the more valuable. TCS is 10 years old, but Japan Korea China trilateral cooperation itself 
as 20 years history. It started as a breakfast meeting at the site of ASEAN summit in 1999. Then Japanese Prime Minister Obuchi proposed a trilateral meeting among the leaders, and then President Kim Dae-jung positively responded. That's how it started. Here, I would like to reiterate our principle regarding the trilateral cooperation. We need a fair recognition that any bilateral relations among the three countries is by default has some difficulty, history and nationalism. Because of that, creating positive framework, focusing on future cooperation is needed. Even if you have bilateral problem in fighting for some issue bilaterally, at least when we meet in trilateral framework, we will just focus on cooperation among three countries and talk vision for the region. This is the essential principle of trilateral cooperation, and it must be maintained. Because only with firm commitment to this principle, TCS can fully able to explore its possibility, fully explore the possible areas of cooperation as much as possible. And as Secretary General Michigami pointed out in his remark, the trilateral cooperation has achieved a lot now that we have 21st ministerial process. It may be not flashy or little uh, media attention, but accumulation of practical cooperation is critically important over time. I would like to comment TCS uh, has been also uh, exploring new areas. For example, local government's cooperation was not very present 10 years ago when I was at the office, but now it has, it has become very important area. This is one of the TCS achievement. Also new areas in human security, such as, disease, uh, dis such as infectious disease or climate change has become important. All three countries face low birth rate and aging population. So we have many things to tackle together as a common uh, challenge. Secondly, geography matters. Three countries are geographical neighbors forever. And so maintaining stable relations is critically important for any of us. It is our common interest. Also geographical proximity made many cooperation meaningful. Disaster relief, use exchange, transportation and logistics are, for example, in exa good important areas in this regard. Third, again, I already touched upon, but um, I would like to reiterate the importance of the use exchange. Because we three countries are neighbors, but don't know each other very much. Rather, we are flooded on the internet or media with prejudice and fantasy of fake news of each other and misunderstand the reality of each other. They are not real. So I hope TCS play a role or platform to deliver reality of and truth of the three countries, each other, especially for the future generation. How much positive view the next generation has toward each other does directly affect the relationship of the future. I would like to uh, commend for the TCS and then the three countries at uh, Youth Summit Young Ambassadors Program, which actually uh, was proposed by one of the staff when I was at the office 10 years ago, still going on. And the Campus Asia uh, OGOB program. I hope more could be done in this regard. Fourth, to establish credibility and high reputation among government scholars and people at large, Fair rich data collection is important. Take CIPRI, it's a Swedish institution, but uh, many governments, scholars, uh, refer to their data when it comes to disarmament, and it increases their reputation as an organization. So data tells the relation of the three countries and significance of the three countries' cooperation to the people. And I really hope that TCS website could be the Bible of trilateral data. Lastly, about a dream. 
TCS does not limit, need to limit its potential only to practical cooperation. Although I stress the practical importance of the practical cooperation. TCS is a sole organization focusing on the trilateral cooperation and its future. So it's legitimate and important for the TCS to study and make propose vision for the future of the region and the three countries role to play. East Asia is the last region of the Cold War regime still not resolved fully. Japan, Korea, China, any of three countries are regional power. China is a huge world economy now. So not just talking about ourselves, three countries have noblest of leash to contribute for the peace, stability and prosperity of the region and world at large. To do so, for example, 1.5 track meeting may be one idea. Maintain neutral and objective manner, discussing various issues and trying to find solution and exchanging visions. TCS can be a great platform. I see rough tide coming in international politics, but I'm convinced that TCS can serve well through for the bright future of trilateral cooperation. And to do so, to make it happen, the three governments of three countries will continue to support TCS because TCS is a common child of the three countries, child of hope. I thank you very much. Well, thank you, Ms. Matsukawa. Uh, it's a pity that she cannot join us in person, but still, it was very good of her to send this video message. And she has, uh, she has, she had many proposals about which I hope we can discuss uh, late, later. Uh, so let me now turn to uh, Mr. Chen Yonghua. Now the floor is yours. Thank you very much to the moderator for introducing me. Kim sung -hwan, former Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Matsukawa Rui, Parliamentary Vice Minister of Defense. Secretary General Michigami of TCS. Although this is an online format, it is a great pleasure for me to have this opportunity to meet all of you today. I'd like to begin by extending my congratulations to you on the 10th anniversary of TCS. I'd like to thank the TCS for its contribution, for its tireless efforts over the last 10 years. I listened to the opening ceremony and to the presentations, and also I read the congratulatory messages of the four ministers of the three countries, and also the keynote speech made by Secretary General Pan Ki-moon. I also uh, enjoyed listening uh, and reading the congratulatory remarks of Xing Haiming, Ambassador of China to the ROK and Secretary General Michigami's remarks. I completely agree with the remarks made by all of these distinguished guests. I have also seen the remarkable growth of trilateral cooperation over the years as I've served in our country's foreign affairs capacity. I also have close ties with TCS as well. While I was dispatched to the ROK as an ambassador, I was asked by the ROK government to work on a TCS founding, and I fully supported the establishment of the Trilateral Cooperation Secretariat. And later, when I became ambassador in Japan, ambassador to Japan, I heard the encouraging news that the TCS was founded, and I kept a close eye on TCS. Based on its close geographic ties and human-to-human -human ties, TCS has helped uh, trilateral cooperation further, and it has broadened and deepened our trilateral cooperation. TCS has led to the uh, facilitation of regional economy and regional trade uh, development. In fact, our trade takes up about 700 billion U.S. dollars, and there are about 30 million people who go cross our borders every year. Our three countries work very closely on RCEP signing, and we have pursued a trilateral FTA negotiations as well. Last year, when the COVID pandemic broke out, we also worked together on disease control measures. Although we are far away from each other, we have worked very closely together, and we have written a very important page in the chapter of history, our trade 
investment have also seen remarkable growth as well. TCS has played a pivotal role in uh, promoting cooperation and partnership among the three countries in establishing this uh, platform and pooling wisdom together and promoting cooperation of all of the key participants and stakeholders. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of the uh, former Secretary Generals of TCS, all of the participants and stakeholders. Thank you very much for your efforts. I think that this uh, participation and this cooperation will become more strong and more robust as we go forward. And this also is a testament to the commitment that we have, that we're going to work even harder in our trilateral cooperation. We have seen a change in the international climate that has never before seen in the last 100 years, along with a pandemic. We are seeing many challenges across different areas. However, we are seeing security in East Asia and our trilateral governments, uh, trilateral countries' economies are recovering as well our East Asian uh, economy. We're seeing more businesses, more industries, new industries coming out. This year is also the 100th anniversary of the establishment of the Communist Party in uh, China. We're going to start a new journey for national upheaval and national development. So we're going to expand our openness and inclusivity and share these uh, lessons learned of the developments with other countries. Uh, President Xi Jinping have talked about climate at the uh, climate summit that justice, fairness, and overcoming of conflict, green growth, uh, closed cooperation, open and inclusive partnership, human destiny, and a common destiny should be shared. A shared destiny and green growth, multilateralism, and a spirit of humanity that we have to go towards a life community or by a community that is shared by all people. And I do believe that this is going to have an inspiration for trilateral cooperation in the future. This IFTS theme is the new trilateral partnership in the next decade. Based on our own key interests and shared interests, we can continue to go forward for the next 10 years into the future. And as partners, we will fulfill our responsibility and have long-term uh, cooperation. And this can be a strong growth engine in the future. To that end, I would like to make the following proposals. First, we have to promote the mutual trust, do a conflict resolution so that we can have a peace in the region. Our three countries are close neighbors, and this is a permanent fixation. So for going forward, we have to engage in more mutual trust and mutual understanding. We have to be respectful and mindful of each other's interests and have a strong political foundation. Based on these shared interests, we have to work together. We cannot be exclusive of each other. We cannot be protectionist. We cannot infringe upon another country's interests. Secondly, we have to be mutually complementary and work together to try to expand our cooperative scope. We are closely intertwined with each other and are each other's very important markets. So we have to have a closer economy and closer our market ties so that we can have a very sure guarantee to our economic development. We can continue to uh, respond to the development needs of regional countries, but we cannot build walls. We cannot go towards the route of decoupling. We have to find green corridors to engage in more cooperation with each other. We have to have for early adoption of RCEP and also based on that, accelerate the uh, F trilateral FTA negotiations so that we can have high level regional economic integration and that East Asia can be an important growth engine in the future for the world. Based on this, big data, AI, smart cities, 5G, and all these different areas, we can expand a cooperation. And in the new digital East Asia that we will see in the future, we can find new ways of cooperation. Thirdly, we can engage in people-to-people -people exchange and have people-to-people -people trust. Earlier, we've heard other speakers talk about this on healthcare, medicine, disease control, and also work towards 2030 UN SDGs. Right now, we have to work towards securing uh, enough vaccines for developing countries. We have to go against vaccine protectionism and try to create a life community for the entire world. We also have to have a political discussions and policy discussions on green growth and environmental protection so that we can have a green transition in our economy. 
based on science and a technology, on eco education, tourism, a think tank cooperation. This would allow for the success of the Beijing Olympics and the Tokyo Olympics. With Campus Asia, East Asia, Culture City, and all of these different cultural related programs should be fostered by us. We have to engage in more trilateral cooperation. And this cooperation should be underscored th uh, throughout all of the de uh, generations. And also, we can work towards global governance. As important international members of the community, we have to shoulder our responsibility in the future. ASEAN, the East Asia Summit, Mekong Summit, and RCEP Summit. We have to build on these different forums and continue to have a robust, a regional, comprehensive framework. We can share our country's development experiences and also respond to climate change, terrorism, and create common goods to respond to that. The oceans are a cradle of our civilization and a resource of our life and biodiversity. It is a support of the sustainable developments of the world. We have to have accountability to the oceans and be responsible stakeholders of the globe and work to resolve issues related to the oceans. My friends and my distinguished guests, Confucius has said that the wise people know how to work together and also work alone. We have shared goals going forward. I am completely confident of trilateral cooperation. I know that all of you are participants and have experiences in trilateral cooperation, so I hope to hear more from you and that we can work towards the welfare and development of East Asia and peace and prosperity for the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was also a couple of uh, concrete proposals, and uh, I'm afraid we don't have time to uh, pick up um, uh, each uh, issue that uh, the three presenters presented. Uh, so let me first of all pick up one common issue that you all mentioned, that is, uh, despite the contributions, the achievements of um, the Trilateral Cooperation Secretariat, we are still facing a grave problem of the lack of mutual understanding, a mutual trust and mutual respect, mutual likability. And this is an immediate uh, problem, I feel, that we need to tackle and uh, try to solve. Now, um, many proposals were presented, um, and it seems to me that uh, we have this huge emotional gap between us, uh, a huge perception gap, and that is based on a huge information gap that exists between the three nations, a huge information gap. And how are we going to communicate better I think this is a crucial question that we all have to think about and come up with a good solution. It's difficult now because of COVID-19. Um, human contact, human to human contact apparently works well. Uh, we experienced this, for example, between Japan and China. More tourists came to Japan and the Chinese likability about Japan went up. Uh, and because last year we couldn't have any Chinese tourists the Chinese likability of Japan did not go up. So it seems there's a, a very a close relationship between human to human contact and the perception of the other country. How are we going to overcome this problem that we are facing? Uh, one immediate uh, method that we can think about is online communication, but this is very tricky, isn't it? So on this question of improving communication, uh, could I have your thoughts on this uh, issue? Um, we have only two panelists, so I would like to uh, listen to you in turn. Um, Mr. Kim, could you kindly take the lead? Thank you. Uh, you pointed out very important uh, matter and issue. And also, uh, you mentioned the information gap. And that is also one of the main source of uh, our friction among our young generation. So the question is how to provide uh, correct information. So in that sense, uh, I think this TCS can be the center of, uh, as Councillor Rui already mentioned, uh, this TCS uh, homepage can be the uh, 
center of disseminating correct uh, information on our three countries. So I ask TCS to monitor this uh, when there is kind of a counter or some internet fighting between young generation or Koreans, between Koreans and Chinese, Koreans and Japanese, then please follow that and you intervene in there and provide them correct information. Because in many cases, I saw that it is coming from misinformation. So I think giving the correct information is very important and TCS can play a vital role in providing that uh, information. And if I may have one more suggestion, then uh, together with the TCS at, at the initiative by the TCS, we can have a kind of, a, how to call it, a good response to the uh, mentioning of other uh, countries, people. Uh, in Korea, we call it sonpul undong. It means uh, provide good response or good mentioning, not a bad reply or just criticizing it, then rather than support and encourage uh, that kind of campaign is necessary. So uh, we need to refrain from uh, emotionally respond, making response to uh, other countries, uh, I mean, reply or response for the something there. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Let me now turn to uh, Mr. Chen Yonghua. Yes, thank you very much. I agree to what uh, Mr. Kim has mentioned. Through this TCS platform, I believe it's important to strengthen cooperation amongst the three governments. In 2011, this was a this was something that was proposed by the Korean government. We had many ministerial meetings that were put together to further exchange. Due to COVID-19, as was already mentioned, it's true that we cannot engage in face-to-face -face exchanges. And this impacts uh, the flow of information as well as people-to-people -people exchanges, which of course impacts the emotions of the people of the three countries. Therefore, right now, at this point in time, video conferencing and other methodologies can be utilized. We need to utilize uh, the possible solutions. In the case of the uh, Campus Asia program, there are a lot of video conferencing that can be utilized. This will help strengthen the communication amongst the younger generation. And I do believe that there are a couple of challenges in which I'm currently focused on, which is that first, because we cannot meet face to face, it's true that we may be impacted by the single faceted press coverage by the media. This can lead to conflicts and it does impact the public opinion. Therefore, through video conferencing and online stations, we need to continue on with further communication. And the second challenge, if you look at the Chinese citizens, as was mentioned by the moderator as well, uh, we have millions that visit or, or thousands visit to Japan and that has led to, uh, to them having a positive view towards the Japanese. However, uh, in, ter in terms of the uh, polluted uh, water from the nuclear reactors, and the disposal of this water, of the Chinese are concentrating on this news. And it's important to offer transparent information through various communication channels. And not only that, it's important to follow international guidelines. Uh, experts and scholars and other various government channels need to be utilized for further communication. So I would like to propose these following items. Thank you very much. Yes, um, the dissemination of scientific, uh, scientifically based information is very important when it comes to these matters, isn't it? Now, uh, next, um, because of the lack of time, let me turn to another question. That is, uh, we were able to convey one question to Ms. Matsukawa. 
And Matsukawa-san answered through email to us. So let me do this Q&A uh, with her. And I will ask you to some related uh, question that has come from the audience. Okay, so let me read this question that we sent to uh, Ms. Matsukawa. That is like this. As some have said, cooperation in human security related areas such as the environment, health and disaster prevention is no doubt all very good and we should promote exchanging these areas. However, is it possible for TCS to play a role beyond that in cases related to diplomacy and security or to other thorny and confrontational issues? That was the question given to uh, Ms. Matsukawa and this is the answer. TCS is the sole international organization focusing on the trilateral cooperation and its future. So it is legitimate for the TCS to study and explore visions for the future of the region and the three countries' role to play. However, unlike the UN, NATO or ASEAN, the TCS membership consists of only three countries. So if TCS is seen to be exploited by any of the three countries, the TCS will lose its legitimacy and trust. Ten years ago, when I was at the TCS, I paid utmost care not to let TCS deal with sensitive issues such as history or North Korea, because then I thought the newly born TCS, which still did not have a strong standing and credibility, might be questioned by the three governments of its own existence. However, after 10 years of various experience and consolidation of its organizational capability, the TCS has more solid, high credibility and capacity to deal with more sensitive issues. By maintaining a neutral and objective manner, discussing various issues and trying to find solutions and exchange visions, TCS can offer a proper platform. I think TCS can host seminars or study groups on difficult issues such as security or North Korea, but she writes in parentheses, but except for history issues, because such an attempt was tried in the past by relevant governments and actually it exacerbated the situation. Parenthesis closed. Uh, for example, TCS could organize track two or track 1.5 meetings in a proper manner with sessions closed if that's necessary. And uh, however, maintaining, she wants to emphasize, maintaining a neutral and objective position is most important and cautious steps are needed. That was her answer to the question. And a related question has come from the audience. So now I would like to pose this question to the two panelists um, who are here today. Uh, that is, the question is like this. We have not seen many channels for discussions and dialogues regarding peace and security in Northeast Asia. What efforts could the three countries do more in this regard? And what is the role of the TCS? Uh, may I uh, turn to uh, Mr. Kim to go first and answer this question? Yes. Uh, uh, just as uh, uh, Councillor Rui already uh, explained, uh, TCS, uh, they started with kind of easy things. So there's a policy of easy thing first, but now it is already 10 years. Uh, we can tackle more difficult things like uh, political issues or security issues. So I still, I think this TCS has a potential to do that because uh, in the past, but still uh, one of the Sony uh, issue uh, is North Korean nuclear, for example. So there was a six party talks, which was dealing with uh, North Korean nuclear issue and Korea, Japan, China, all were uh, the parties of the six party talks. So, uh, so long as North Korea wants to talk only with the United States on this issue, maybe that should be the starting point. I mean, North Korea, US dialogue can be the starting point. But at some point, particularly in the implementation stage, three countries can make a contribution to that once agreement is made as we witnessed uh, in the uh, Geneva Agreement. So all our three countries participated in implementing that agreement. So these security issues, it is true that it is very difficult to handle, 
but uh, gradually, gradually, uh, step by step, uh, I mean, this TCS also can handle this. And one of the way is, as uh, Councillor Rui suggested, uh, it's a 1.5 track or a seminar on security. Uh, nowadays, until now, uh, this TCS is focusing on non-traditional uh, security issues, uh, so-called humanitarian issues. But uh, we can expand uh, the range of our discussion to the security area at some point. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Let me now ask uh, Mr. Chen Yonghua to respond. Thank you. With regard to this issue, up till now, TCS uh, was a bit passive or cautious. We had uh, the CJK summit and we had two track meetings up till now. And with regard to security issues of the CJK, the reason why we were a bit negative, uh, a bit passive, excuse me, was because in the past uh, we had historical issues and also issues or relics of the Cold War that still remain standing. And we do still have the security challenges, and they are currently uh, hindrances to mutual trust amongst the countries. In Northeast Asia, We do need a security mechanism that can help us pursue security as well as interests of the countries, but it's very difficult and we need to work further on this. High, the high level officials uh, and gov governments need to communicate further. And not only that, we need to understand ways to strengthen partnership to reduce and minimize misunderstandings. Trade people-to-people -people exchanges need to be strengthened all the more so that we can also build tr mutual trust. And this has to serve as a foundation for further exchange. And only then can we strengthen cooperation in the security fund. And I believe sustainable development can be only possible with this approach. Thank you very much. We are quickly running out of time, but let us entertain one more question from the audience. Uh, all right. It's like this. Uh, despite the ups and downs of bilateral relations, would there be any areas of cooperation that are directly related to the welfare of the peoples and without being affected by political issues? Could you please give some specific examples of future directions of trilateral cooperation in this regard, you know, cooperation that are directly related to the welfare of the peoples? I personally am very much interested in fishery conservation. I would, I want to keep on eating sushi, uh, but uh, sorry, that's uh, my personal uh, view. Uh, Mr. Kim, can I turn to you for an answer? Yes, uh, there are many areas uh, we can do together uh, without having affected by the political situation. Uh, but I think uh, at the moment, the most compelling issue is um, how to cope with climate change. So this is directly affecting our daily lives. So three countries can do together, uh, as I already mentioned during my remarks, but uh, uh, three countries can make a good uh, program on these uh, climate issues and also uh, one of the UN program SDGs. So until 2030, three countries should uh, implement the 17 goals of that SDGs. So in implementing these SDGs, three countries can, uh, I'm sure that uh, we can do uh, many things together. So there is one of the SDGs and how to cope with the climate area. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's a very important point. Uh, Mr. Chen Yonghua, can I turn to you now? Uh, yes, thank you.
so it was a question on how to work uh, and promote cooperation amongst the three countries. There were some um, ups and downs. However, I believe that good bilateral relations would be a good foundation for trilateral cooperation. Therefore, I believe that it's important to solve the issues uh, that exist bilaterally so that it can become a strong foundation for trilateral cooperation going forward. And also on the welfare of the people, I believe many exchanges can be possible. And by strengthening such exchange, and as well as exchange in the economic front, I believe that the three countries can focus on environment as well as, as, well as uh, fisheries. And uh, fishery stock. And I think we need further communication in all of these sectors so that we can minimize needless misunderstanding, unnecessary misunderstanding, and also solve the problems at hand. Well, thank you uh, very much, Mr. Kim, Mr. Chun. I'm afraid we have run out of time. There are many more questions that I have uh, um, here in front of me, but we cannot uh, go any further because of um, uh, the lack of time. Um, so let me try and wrap up. Uh, I think we all positively assessed the achievements of the, the, the DCS in the past 10 years, and we have great hopes uh, for its role uh, in the coming uh, years. And I think we all believe in um, good communication that will help us breed a mutual trust that is so important in maintaining peace and promoting development in this region. So how can we improve means of communication? Uh, I think that is a very important point. You know, I tell about this uh, trilateral uh, commission, um, uh, cooperation secretariat, I tell uh, my friends about Campus Asia, and not many people know about these things, uh, not in Europe, not in North America. They're very surprised to hear our efforts, um, uh, concrete efforts like this. And one very unfortunate fact is that even in our own countries, not many people know about the efforts that are made uh, trilaterally in a very cooperative, uh, cordial manner. So I think communication in all directions is so important. And I hope that the TCS uh, would play uh, an increasingly uh, large role uh, in promoting peace and development, uh, especially based on uh, very good communications amongst the three uh, nations. So thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kim, Mr. Chung, and I would like to thank Ms. Maska uh, also uh, for this wonderful session, the opening session, that uh, the first session that we had. And now I would like to close our, our session in the morning. Thank you uh, so much. Thank you.